Almost everyone knows that Toronto's CN Tower was the answer. It's the question that eludes most people. By the late 1960s, the Toronto skyline was growing. The race to see who could put up a taller building was completely befuddling communications. Pre-skyscraper transmission towers weren't high enough to broadcast over the new obstacles, and signal bounce was causing severe ghosting on television receivers and distortion on FM radio and general communications. The CN Tower was the answer. A long list of superlatives, firsts, and generally amazing facts has been attached to the tower. Here's a sampling. Fifteen years after it was built, it's still the world's tallest freestanding structure. The foundation goes down 50 feet and contains 9,200 cubic yards of concrete, 500 tons of reinforcing steel, and 40 tons of tensioning cable. The tower cost $57 million to build. It took only 40 months. It weighs in at 130,000 tons. That's the equivalent of 23,214 large elephants. It contains 53,000 cubic yards of concrete and 6,000 tons of steel. Approximately 1,800,000 people think it's nifty enough to visit every year. Those millions of people a year are treated to a wonderful view, but unfortunately never get to see the inner workings. As a public service, the Acme Cam braved its fear of heights and was allowed to snoop behind closed doors. This is the television transmitter level, level 5, 1,165 feet above ground. Eight TV stations have their transmitters here, but there are more than eight transmitters. Television channels are comprised of two components, sound and picture, that broadcast on two frequencies. That's why it's referred to as a channel. Some broadcasters use separate sound and picture transmitters, and some use two identical transmitters combined to produce their final output. Using two smaller units rather than one large one allows the broadcasters to stay on the air with reduced power if something fails. This is TV Ontario's transmitter. It's broken, and we got a chance to peek into the power supply. 25,000 volts at 10 amps. That's 250,000 watts. This explains why you only get to look into a transmitter like this when it's off. There are a lot of safety interlocks. TVO was still on the air at full power because it has an identical standby unit. This is the switch that selects which transmitter gets connected to the antenna. The bright red thing is the output tube of the transmitter. It's a klystron tube and it's similar to the little tubes that were in Granny's radio. Well, okay, it's four feet tall, solid metal, water-cooled, costs $100,000 and operates on a slightly different principle, but it's otherwise similar. Ironically, this transmitter was shut down because its cooling water pump was broken. This plumbing isn't the water cooling. As well as combining individual broadcaster signals, this plumbing eventually combines all of the signals for feeding to the tower's antenna. Well, actually, antennas. There are two identical antenna arrays, too, for all of the same reasons that there are often two transmitters per channel. The pipes are a pipe within a pipe. They're functionally similar to the coaxial cable that brings cable TV to you, an outer shield kept a precise distance from an inner conductor. The main difference is the amount of power that this plumbing can handle. This is a similar floor, level 6. Ten of Toronto's FM stations have their transmitters on the tower. FM radio uses similar frequencies to TV, so this all has a familiar feel. There are no AM broadcasters on the tower. AM radio uses big long wavelengths that require different antennas. They also don't need the height that the tower offers. Those big long wavelengths aren't plagued by signal bounce. Here we are in the restaurant. The seating area in the restaurant rotates a full 360 degrees about once every hour. The entire area is a large turntable. Waiters and waitresses have to keep track of where their tables have rotated to while they were in the kitchen. 
and patrons are reminded not to place valuables on the ledge. In the words of Albert Einstein, it will look as though the purse is traveling away from you. Here's the unit that moves the whole works. These big green rubbery wheels are held against the rail by spring action, and the entire works is free to float with minor variations in the rail. The wheels are driven by a gearbox, which is in turn driven by belts, so that the unit can float. And just what is it that drives the mighty multi-ton turntable? Well, it's a two horsepower electric motor, the kind that might be found on a good table saw. The slow speed of rotation achieved by all that gearing doesn't require a lot of force. To be fair, there's another two horsepower drive unit on the other side of the floor, so this is really a four horsepower restaurant. The bubble-shaped radome just below the restaurant houses the tower's microwave dishes. These dishes point to various points on land and carry a variety of communication signals, including the incoming signals of the broadcasters using the tower. The bubble's made from fabric, Teflon-coated rayon one thirty-second of an inch thick. It gets its bubble shape from being inflated. To enter the bubble area, you first pass an airlock. Looking from the inside of the ray dome out is one of the most interesting feelings you can get at the tower. Gee, one thirty-second of an inch of fabric between me and... This is the mechanical room. It contains the air conditioning equipment, hot water tanks, and a lot of other things you'd expect to see. We include it for the kind of person who likes to see the basement. This particular basement is 1,200 feet in the air. Being the tallest thing in Toronto poses a problem for the water supply. Water in Toronto flows from the highest reservoir to our taps by gravity. To get drinking and washing water to the top requires large pumps at ground level. Water is pumped to a tank at the top of the tower and flows back down by gravity. The other pumps here are for the fire system. It's a closed system under pressure with its tank also at the top. Even if you've never visited Toronto, there's a good chance you've heard of the CN Tower, still the world's tallest freestanding structure. Thanks to the folks who worked to keep the tower ship-shape and up-to-date, now you can say you've seen it, too. <laughs>